Hi everyone, so um, this video is actually going to be um, a small tutorial on a small problem in Perp. Um, I wouldn't say small, I mean I've been banging my head against it for almost a day and I was finally actually able to figure it out with the help of Perp's own support forum. I would suggest you guys to check it out if you have any issues and apart from that uh, an extension. So um, this is uh, this code is also from that extension. Um, I'm actually going to explain the problem statement here. So let's say you are trying to scan a host, right? Um, I don't have anything in here. Let's say you are trying to scan facebook.com and when you start the scan after 100 or 200 requests, let's say concurrent or whatever. So they have this um, kind of a rate limit check on the back end. If a user with a session creates almost 50 to 100 requests, you are, uh, they are going to destroy your session. So in that case, your scanning becomes unauthenticated and uh, it cannot be, you know, you cannot depend on it. And sometimes you won't even know. Sometimes the dashboard would tell you that, you know, um, your session has expired or, you know, unauthenticated. Sometimes if you open the scanner, um, there is that logger part which tells you that, you know, these requests are now returning that you are not authenticated. So what do you do in that case? How do you actually automate passing the updated session back to the scanner? So whenever you get unauthenticated or your session gets destroyed, it automatically gets a new JWT token or it gets new cookies and it starts working again. So that was my question and um, that was that was the problem I was facing and I was actually able to figure that out and this video is actually based on that. So um, with the problem explained, uh, now we are going to move forward. So we, this video would be two steps, right? Um, the first step would be covering uh, getting cookies automatically. And the second part would be covering uh, getting a JWT token or, you know, a generic authorization token or whatever header or whatever value you want, uh, you want to be replaced uh, actually in headers. All right. So for this, the guy who made the extension uh, add custom header, he also added a Python uh, server to, you know, a Flask server to actually check uh, that stuff. I modified it a little bit, um, added the cookies part over here. I'm going to create a fourth request maybe after this video. Um, and then, you know, I modified this a little bit over here as well. Right. Um, you guys can see the Git diff. All right, so let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is actually work with the cookies. So for the cookies to work, you do not need any extension, right? Um, uh, that is covered by Burp itself. And I was actually able to make it work without, you know, um, without getting stressed a lot. But the main issue was actually getting the uh, authorization token replaced automatically. So that was the main issue. So um, let's get started with the cookie part and then we are going to move on to um, the authorization part. All right. So I'm going to run the Flask server. Um, I have over here Flask run, and there we go. We got host, and it says you know logged in. So if we come back in here, we are going to see like what is actually happening on the backend. I'm going to open Burp's own browser for this, and I'm going to visit slash. So whenever you visit slash, um, it says that no cookies header was received. Um, uh, if you come back here in the source uh this over here so if there is no cookie header it's just going to say no cookies headers were received and uh if the cookie if there is cookie and the cookie value contains test or you know the whole string contains test it is going to say logged in uh, i just wrote some you know messy code but it actually it it actually works so you know not going to change that and if you want to get cookie um you can say that this is your login endpoint right whenever you create a post request whatever it is going to give you cookies in the response so you want to use those cookies in this request right so what i am going to do is fetch this cookie endpoint and we can see that probably Okay, it's the wrong browser. This this one over here. Um, so about that, and there we go. So you can see that in here we get set cookie user is equal to test, and then in all the subsequent requests, if I you know just give it a refresh, the browser is automatically going to pass that cookie in every request. Now, how do we automate this? So that is the thing we are going to do over here. So um, let's get started. So for that, you have to come into project options sessions. And now you are going to um, add a new session handling rule. This would be cookies placement. Right. 
So for now, I'm going to only um, limit this to repeater. All the requests I do in repeater, I want those to get the cookie dynamically, right? I don't want to hard code anything or I don't want to add it manually. So I'm going to check repeater here. If you're going to use scanner or whatever, so you know, just make sure to check these options uh, according to what you need. And then the next next thing is you need to specify the scope here as well you can specify custom using regex or advanced the main uh, the one i'm going to use is include all urls because um you can actually specify local version here but i'm not going to do that um in your case let's say if you're testing application and you're browsing uh, something at the same time uh, you should actually you know limit the scope because let's say you are opening youtube and it has the authorization um, header uh, header uh, this rule is going to replace that right so you might see some issues in your application so uh, for now i'm just using this make sure to change that so i'm going to add a check here uh, the first check or action would be to check if my session is valid or not um, to see if uh, I am logged in or not if you know I have been logged out so I'm going to do that so what I wanted to do is you know issue the request and then check for a string in the headers or response body or URL of the redirection target so sometimes it tells you itself that it is logged out but in most cases you have to hard code the string for when your session gets destroyed or uh, you do not have any session so i'm just going to use this one over here which is unauthenticated please log in again or you can use this if if no cookie header is present you will be using this string it'll automatically add the cookie header and um if you do have the cookie header and wrong value you'll be using this so let's just use this one so this is a string i want to be checked and once it checks that string once it knows that my session is invalid we want it to do something for us uh, but i'm going to leave it at it uh, right there right now uh, now we are going to open sessions tracer and we're going to see what happens you know on the back end so this actually tells it uh, tells us if you want to you know debug request it'll tell what is happening where so i just send that request and you can see that it detected that my session is invalid and then it you know just completed there from based on this response it told me my session is invalid so now we are going to move to the second part that is to replace uh, or add cookies so for that we are going to write a new macro this is really easy um, you know just add a new macro select the request which is giving you back the cookies so in my case this one here is you know giving this cookie here so I'm saying going to say okay and then configure item um add actually i would just say cookie here whatever you can name it whatever you want and then you know use regex so uh, actually you do not have to do uh, this at all because we are not passing anything from here and uh burps on cookie jar will automatically you know load these um uh, into the uh, into the cookie jar and then uh, it'll automatically add that in all the subsequent requests so you don't have to do this but if you want to you can you know so what happens uh when you select something is that uh, uh, let's say if you are if you run python or anything you have a function which returns something right so that macro is essentially going to return this right user is equal to test or whatever you select right so add a regex here and you know it'll it'll fetch that so yeah just to demo this um okay so all we want is this all right okay and then uh it is going to update current request with the last response fetch from the macro right and then it is actually going to uh, this is the main thing which is going to happen update current request with cookies from session handling cookie jar so those were loaded from the macro response and it will be now included in our request so hopefully everything is uh, okay i think and this will work let's give it a try and you can see that it automatically got the cookie user is equal to test we didn't have to do anything at all but this is in case the cookie is not present so if i change this you'll see that this won't work it isn't doing anything it is not adding that user is equal to test again so uh, as i told you before we have to actually use this string so you can see that this one uh, this string is returned when there is no cookie header at all but this string is returned when there is uh, the string test is not present in the cookies values right so just beware uh, now in this case we are going to use this Let, let's say when your session gets destroyed and you already have a cookie you're going to be used uh, you're going to be using this right so if we come back in here in the project options and i'm just going to paste that string in here right now it is going to update it automatically there we go right um so let's say this is our expired session um, cookie user equal to ccc and we want the updated cookie 
it is going to pass that in here. Now let's go to session tracer and we're going to see step by step what happened and how. So just going to drag it a little bit like that. Okay, so the first thing it did, it checked if the session is valid and how it did that, it sent a request um, with this response and you can see that this is the value we sent. And uh, it said that, you know, based on this string which we added, said that session is invalid. Now, because session is invalid, we wanted it to run the macro one to uh, make a get request here and you know get the cookies for us so it did that it got the cookies and it updated cookie in the cookie jar right we didn't have to actually return anything it automatically did that and then um, it um, you know it did the request got those uh, added those in this session jar and then it actually included it in our final request um, user is equal to test I think this one added one cookie right here so you can see the user test response um, 200 um, actually, if we actually fetch the main thing we want to do is actually fetch slash not cookie and let's try that So you can see that this is the whole flow and I would actually urge you um, or I don't think so if that's the word <laughs> so um, I would actually say that use session tracer whenever you are trying to debug your request So I didn't even know that this existed uh, You know, I just I was just looking at here and just suddenly I saw it here and, and used this and I, I was actually able to you know uh, Uncover the whole flow So the main thing here we want is to access slash and uh, again because you know first we are going to add the string here but in your case you are always going to have that cookie header right the value just uh, will just change so yep that is it for the cookie part now we are going to move to the tricky part in which you know uh, we do not have the session the cookie jar from perp right uh, we cannot actually use that for this so it is a custom header authorization first i'm going to show you the flow like how it checks if it's logged in or not so uh, just like here the cookie was uh, this request was made to slash cookie and then user and test was returned and in this case the request is made to slash login uh, with get or post and then you get an access token this is the bidder token and in your slash stuff request it checks if the authorization header is present and if it is does it contain the value this is a bear token and if it does it is going to say logged in and it is going to return http response code 200 and if it isn't it is going to say unauthenticated please log in again and we'll get a 401 unauthorized all right so let's you know start and imitate this one i'm going to request stuff first and see what happens so it says that no authentication header were received and if you were to look at here this this is a response um now i'm going to slash uh try login and you know this just returns us what it, uh, we wanted to so one thing i'm going to do here is you know empty my browser of the cookies it has because we don't want those in here um application cookies you know i'm just going to delete the cookies save right so there we go we don't we don't want the cookies right now so login and stuff there we go these two requests so let's go back into repeater and see um, uh, this is the bear token and then stuff actually needs that token so I'm just going to send stuff and login to repeater and I'm going to call login and I'm going to copy this I'm going to add a new header here saying authorization bearer this is a bear token and you can see that it says logged in if you change this it'll say that unauthenticated, unauthenticated please log in again just like down here uh, we have the same flow here all right so we are going to check two strings in here as well so i'm just going to uh, uh so, so since that was enabled it automatically i did that cookie user is equal to test <laughs> i'm going to disable that and um you know i'm just going to remove this for now i don't want it or do i um let it be i, I don't think so it'll interfere once it's disabled all right, everything is cool. I'm just going to remove that uh, in here as well. All right, so let's get started. The first thing we are going to need here is the same. We are going to check if the session is invalid. This would be off header placement. And then we are going to check if the session is valid. How are we going to check the that? We are going to check that based on no authentication. Actually, let's just start with this one, right? I have all, uh, already demonstrated that one. So what we are going to do is just add the authorization uh, header, but with some wrong value, it will automatically update that. And then if the session is invalid, we want it to, you know, make a request to slash login. And in this case, we are going to return that JWT or, you know, bearer token, whatever. So I'm going to add a macro in here that would actually call slash login and get that. So in this case, we're going to use that regex thing, which we saw previously. So I'll just name this one access token and 
this is the value we want you can see that it automatically wrote a regex for us or you can you know just copy the string manually if you want to add that in here um i'm not sure why i didn't copy that okay the, no so just look at this do that and you can see that we have in here refetch refetch the response you can see that the seconds are being updated and we are getting the new token again and again but dry regex matches this still all right okay so now this is going to this macro is going to return this value and uh we are going to suppose that this value is going to be dynamic in the future uh every time for our application but in this case it is static right but it is being fetched dynamically so i guess that does it for us and then after that is done so first we are you know just going to take a look at it um need to specify the scope again to repeater only and then include all urls and then we are going to open sessions tracer and we want to see what happens so if i make a request to stuff we should be seeing oh there we go it says the session is valid because we haven't added the authorization token here yet remember the string we added there we go so uh i hit this um bear is equal to ast let, uh, let's just let it be so i'm gonna get it please log in again and if you come in here you can see that you know the session is valid and it actually automatically replaced it so just going to come in here and you know turn that off uh, <laughs> it is still doing that come back in here and um it ran the macro number two and i'm not sure if i told the macro two to do this but it is doing it in on i'm not sure why <laughs> okay so yeah hmm it added that uses equal to test i think it is um it has load that it's using it so we are just going to ignore this right so the the thing we wanted to see here is session is invalid right now we want that to be uh updated so what we are going to do is uh go to extender and going to enable this add custom header you can actually find that in the app store in here um add custom header here it is right and here are all the features you can check the repo uh, I'm, I'm going to be making a pull request to not port triggers one i think the main one so yeah all right so here we can see that authorization bearer you can add custom values in here and we, i'm going to actually select regular expression and then this is uh this is what's going to happen that access token which was returned uh is going to be replaced uh, going to be placed right after this bearer string here right with the space here so yeah so now let's give it a try come back into project options i'm going to edit that um i'm going to edit this one as well um let me just remove the macro one does it get removed oh no because it is present Remove the cookie placement remove this one as well i don't want it and then remove macro one okay there we go so coming back in here check if the session is invalid so after everything is done the macro two runs right checks for login and everything and just so this is this was the culprit here you know just uncheck this and the cookie would won't be loaded I just know that all right so this is the main thing after running the macro we want this extension to be loaded add custom header so now this is automatically going to replace that for us so let's give it a try and see if it works there we go you can see that we got the dynamic token in here this is a bear token if i were to say asdf um it'll automatically replace that cccc whatever it'll replace that for us so yeah that was it let me just you know give you a look at session tracer again uh, remember this is a really good tool and i would urge you to actually use it so in this case it was valid so it said that it is valid but in this case it was invalid so you know it just it did this whole flow it uh went there to lock in and it again included that whatever and then in the end it you know updated that um from whatever value was fetched from slash login and it added that in here so yeah that was about it uh hopefully if you have any questions i mean this was uh difficult for me to understand as well if you have any questions you can ask me or on the repository i'm, I'm going to leave uh leave two to three links into the uh, description of the video the first thing would be the source um the link of verb custom header and then the second thing would be the issue where we discuss this stuff and the third thing would be the forum post of verb board trigger uh, again i would urge you to ask questions there if you have any so yeah that's it thank you very much for watching see you in the next one